Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. I hope this new year has started off good for you guys and everything has been good and life has been treating you well. But today's chat is going to be part three of our slavery series. Now we ended part two with slaves arriving in Virginia and the introduction to the plantations. Now this is where we will be picking up today. Now we're just going to dive on right into it today. So with that being said, let's chat. During the Atlantic slave trade, about 12 million or more enslaved Africans they were torn from their homes and forced into slavery. And possibly less than 10 million survived the voyage alone. Now, many more, they didn't make it long once they actually made it to their destinations as well. Now, many slaves within the South, they resided on what is known as plantations. Now, the term plantation means to plant, and it came about as settlers arose in the Southern United States. Now, as I stated earlier, the term plantation, it originally meant to plant, and it relates to agriculture and the agriculture world. Now, this word first appeared in English in the 15th century, and as time passed, the word plantation, it became connected to large-scale enslaved labor operations along the Western Hemisphere. Now, as the British colonists began to arrive in Virginia, the land itself, it was divided into large areas suitable for farming. And plantation systems, they began to develop in the southern areas of America. And the plantations, I mean, they were popping up everywhere in the south. And one would think the way they were popping up everywhere, that the British, they actually had rights to the land. But no, of course they didn't. The land had actually been stolen from indigenous nations by way of deceitful treaties and violence, of course. And it didn't take long before the plantations began to dominate the South. I mean, they dominated the South because they produced cash crops, or in other words, crops mainly to sell on the market. Now, there were areas on the plantations that were used to grow food for eating and consumption, but the land was mainly used to grow those cash crops. And the economy of the South, it depended on these cash crops also. So, of course, they were trying to grow as many as they possibly could. Now, the common cash crops grown were rice, indigo, cotton, and tobacco. And the most profitable cash crops were cotton and tobacco. Now, although cotton, it really didn't take off until around 1830. And this was when the demand grew with that introduction to Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. Now, plantations, they were huge. And the climate of the South, it was ideal for growing those cash crops. I mean, we know it's hot, it's humid. And it was just perfect. So the crops, they were plentiful. Now, of course, with so many crops, many hands were needed to harvest them, of course. I mean, and as I stated in chapter two of the series, the initial workers, they were those indentured servants. And they were from England, you know, some from Africa, and they worked under contracts. Now, the contracts, they lasted for only a period of time for some. And that period of time could be anywhere from four to seven years or less or more, um, according to the reports. Now, but as we know from part two, contracts were not honored for the Africans. And soon there were no contracts at all for the Africans. And the Africans, they were given life sentences of forced slave labor from birth. I mean, the law stated any child born of a mother who is a slave shall be a slave also. Now, forcing Africans into slavery is how hands were acquired to work. I mean, and that was pretty much cheap. Well, you can't even say cheap, just pretty much say free labor to work these huge plantations and harvest these crops. Now, and not only did the slaves work the plantations, they also worked within their owners or their master's home. 
Now, a typical plantation, it consisted of a large body of land that included the fields with the multiple crops, the gardens, the pastures, the workspaces, and several buildings or huts, you know, depending on how generous the owner or the master was. And I'll tell you all what I mean by that a little bit later. Now, the buildings on many plantations sometimes included stables, storehouses, barns, sheds, quarters, or huts for the slaves, and the plantation owners or the master's home. I mean, you know, the big house in my Samuel L. voice. But it said that the yard across from the big house, it resembled a small plantation. I mean, that means this yard, it pretty much included an ice house, a smoke house, a dairy, a well, a kitchen, a laundry, and the quarters or the huts for the slaves. Now, I meant by it depending on how generous the master was, because if he was generous and he actually cared about his slaves, then they had some pretty decent little huts or, you know, building quarters out there for them to live in. But of course, you know, everything else that was out there on the yard or the plantation um, across from the big house, such as the house and all of that. I'm saying the well and the ice house and all that good stuff. Of course, we know all of that was there for the plantation owner or the master and his family that was not there for those slaves. They were just used to work it. Now, many slaves, they were lucky if they got a decent hut, like I said, um, because most of them, they live in some pretty deplorable conditions, not safe from weather or anything like that. Dirt floors, um, pretty much if it rained, you got wet, all the above. So life for a slave, it was rough. It was inhumane, violent, and unimaginable to many living within today's society. The young children today, they would not be able to fathom what these people actually went through if you just have a discussion with them. Now, slaves, they were treated worse than animals. I mean, no matter their ages or anything. And as a slave's life on the plantation, it varied depending on their role in several different factors. Now, being a slave on a plantation, it was hard. But many slaves, they preferred to live on a plantation opposed to living or working with a small farm owner. And this was because if a small farm owner, if he had a bad season or he didn't do well and produce you no know, good crops, then he didn't make much money. And if he didn't make money, he couldn't feed his slaves. So his slaves would starve to death. So they preferred to work the plantations because this ensured that they would at least get a meal, you know, here and there. Now, on a plantation, like I said, a slave's life, it varied depending on several factors, which included their role, their talents, their talents, I'm sorry, or their abilities and their worth. Now, different slave roles included field slaves and these field slaves, they worked the fields from sun up to sundown six days a week. Now, while working in the fields, if a field slave was too tired or too sick to work, then their punishment could include imprisonment. We know about the hot box, um, whippings, torture, mutilation, or being sold off to another plantation, which could also mean being separated from their families. Now, speaking of whips and whippings, I want to steer from the discussion just a tad to share an interesting and as I quote rumor with you all. Now, don't bite my head off. I just want to share this with you. Now, this rumor is about a quite popular restaurant named Cracker Barrel. Now, it has been said that the restaurant's logo and name has raised many questions. Now, the name of the restaurant contains the word cracker, which was said to be a term used to describe white people or the whip that was used to beat the slaves. Now, it said this term was used because the whip made a cracking noise when the slaves were beaten. Now, as far as the restaurant's logo, now it has raised many questions as well. Now, two things were pointed out when it comes to the logo. Now, the first is that the man in the photo, he's propped up on a barrel. And of course, we know the 
name of the restaurant is Cracker Barrel. So it is said that, you know, back in slavery times, there was a such thing called as a, a Cracker Barrel. And this barrel was used to store the whips in the general stores that were available for sale because they called a whip a cracker. Now, this is according to some. Now, others, they say that this isn't true at all because this barrel was called a cracker barrel because it was used to store saltine crackers. So, but the second interesting thing stated about the restaurant's logo is the K in the word cracker and the first R in the word barrel, they seem to be connecting and forming what looks to some people to be a whip. Now, if you're a fan of Cracker Barrel, I'm not coming for your favorite restaurant, so don't come for me. I just wanted to fill you all in on that, and I would love to hear what you all think about it in the comments. But back to the story. Now, as I stated, field slaves, they were forced to complete harsh labor and they receive brutal punishment if they didn't and not only that they were given food to eat not even deemed suitable for animals to eat i mean that's what some people may say but let me tell you this now some of the scraps that the slaves were given that the slave owners deemed as inedible and just slopping scraps the slaves they perfected those dishes and those scraps and that slop and they turned it into some pretty quite tasty dishes i mean in fact some of these dishes are still ate today and they're considered to be delicacies now i'm talking about the pig intestines or the chitlins the trife a tripe, I'm sorry, the hog maws, the mountain oysters or testicles, the pig feet, the chicken feet, and so much more. I mean, heck, a thing of chitterlings is over $50 now in some areas. But back to the story. Now, another role of slaves or another type of slave, in other words, was the plantation slave. Now, plantation slaves, they planted and harvested crops just the same as the field slaves. But most of these crops were the ones that were used for eating and consumption, like in the gardens and things like that. And the plantation slaves, they did not only work with crops, they also cut and hauled wood, they cleared new lands, they dug ditches, they repaired buildings and tools, they slaughtered livestock. They were blacksmith, they were mechanics, they were carpenters, they were drivers. I mean, they did so much more. They were pretty much jacks of all trades. I mean, next, we have the house slave, which in itself had many categories. Now, most slaves were, or more house slaves, they were aesthetically pleasing or easy on the eyes, in other words. And they had many different roles or jobs. Now, all in all, all of their roles, they did revolve around, you know, serving the master and his family and all of that. But there were house slaves who cooked, ones who took care of the children, some who sold, they spit weaves, they cleaned the home and washed the laundry. I mean, they pretty much did it all. And they would even perform sexually if they were ordered to. Now, many house slaves, they were black women, but some house slaves, they were used as men as well. Um, now, house slaves, it got so deep with those that were the black women that some of them would even breastfeed the master's children. Now, house slaves, they were always at their owner and his family's beck and call. No matter what day it was or what time of day it was, they had to be there. They were required to be there to serve their master and his family. And house slaves, they lived in close proximity with the master. I mean, in fact, their children even played with the master's children. I mean, the children, they didn't see racism or color with their little innocent eyes. And, you know, they were just innocent. They simply just saw a friend to play with. And the children, they didn't understand the system when they were younger, but they did begin to follow it once they grew and became older. And the next role of a slave or the next type was the breeding slave. Now, breeding slaves, they were forced to breed whether they chose to or not. 
they were forced to produce other slaves. Now, the slave owners, they believed if they had control of whom their slaves reproduced with, then they had control of the children that they produced. Now, in my opinion, this was pretty much a precursor to Darwin's theory. You know, Charles Darwin, his theory, which was survival of the fittest. You know, only the strong survive. I mean, check out my video about the Tuskegee experiment for more information about that and Charles Darwin and his theory. But back on to the story. Now, life as a slave, it was harsh and it was definitely inhumane. I mean, they had a diet of scraps. And that was if they was even given something to eat at all. I mean, they lived in horrible shacks, not even suitable for animals. They were subject to all type of weather conditions. I mean, some slaves, they worked six days a week from sunup to sundown. While others, like the house slaves, who you would have thought had it easier, the fact that they were there to serve the master and his family, they worked possibly up to 365 days a year. It just depended. I mean, the slaves, they had to deal with all of this, all while being beaten, tortured, and assaulted sexually. And on top of that, we know that they barely had any clothing or anything like that. And as I said, they were subject to all type of weather conditions. And in the South, we know it's a lot of heat and humidity. So with that heat and humidity and all of that and the diseases, because of course that was a habitat for diseases, many lives were lost. I mean, the health of a slave, it was far worse than their owners and the owner's families. And slaves who worked the rice plantations, they were said to have suffered the worst, according to the reports. Rice plantations, I mean, they were said to be the most deadly for slaves. Slaves had to stand in large bodies of water in the blazing hot sun for hours. And malaria, it ran rapid. We know those conditions are the perfect conditions for mosquito breeding. So they were definitely getting ate up by those mosquitoes out there. Now, rice plantations, they were so horrible. They were said to be a dead sentence for children. I mean, when rice plantation child mortality is compared to child mortality of other plantations, and child mortality, it pretty much means the percentage of children who didn't live to be five years old, so they passed before they turned five. So, but child mortality on the plantations, just other plantations, it was around 66%, which is still bad. But on rice plantations, it was around 90%. So that means pretty much nine out of 10 children born would pass away. Um, one would think that life for a slave couldn't get much worse. I mean, it seems like what else you got? But it did. It did get much worse. I mean, imagine going through the harshness of being a slave, enduring all of the hardships of life, hardships that only seem better when you spend time with your family. Then one day, your family is torn apart. And it's torn apart because yourself, your spouse, or one of your children, if not all of your children, they're ripped away and they're sold at an auction. And many times to never be seen again. I mean, with such hard and harsh, inhumane lives, of course the slaves, they rebelled and some of them attempted to escape. I mean, we know there were some. I mean, why wouldn't they? I mean, it's just, it's a lot when it comes to rebellion. You know, we got to take that trip on through the Underground Railroad and everything. So, we're going to get into this in part four, which is going to be the escape to freedom. And well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. Please tell me what you think. I mean, what do you think about the plantations? 
I mean, what do you think about the foods the slaves were given to eat and how they perfected those foods? Remember, greens, it was something that the master didn't want as well. Check out my A Slave's Thanksgiving little short video and it'll tell you about the different foods. But what do you think about the Cracker Barrel rumor? I mean, do you think it's a rumor or do you believe it's true? And please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please, 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 please subscribe if you haven't already. We are trying to get our thousand subscribers. We need 50, well, less than 50 to make it to that thousand. And I want to be able to continue to make these videos, but we definitely got to meet our threshold in order for me to continue. So please, please, please go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.